It's great to be back everyone and I know I've been gone for a long while so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This video has been a blast to make and Lim is one of the most complicated characters yet more rewarding characters of the cast. Now, I'd insert an Inception joke here, but I'm not that cheap. Now, welcome back to this episode of Battle Guides featuring Lim, the dream within a dream. Now, Lim is one hard character to play, even though she's only Flight 3, because most of her power comes from knowing what your opponent is going to do. And it's not as simple as just guessing your opponent's base, no. It's a bit more complicated than that, because aside from just worrying about what specific attack her opponent might play, Lim has to worry about what specific priority the opponent will be using. Though it's not as complicated to guess as Octavia, Lim's power truly, truly comes from playing the right cards at the right time. Lim's unique ability is Dreamscape Madness. Now, after all reveal effects and clashes have been resolved, Lim gains a value called Disparity, which is equal to the difference between her priority and the opponent's. Now, it doesn't matter who has the greater priority as Disparity is always a positive value. Now, Disparity doesn't do anything on its own, and it's usually the value that most of her styles take into account when performing numerous effects. However, remember that Disparity does not change within a beat, and all of her Disparity effects are cumulative, meaning that the Disparity 2 and Disparity 5 effects will both work if Lim has Disparity 5 or above. Remember that Lim is all about guessing your opponent's priority as her priority values are not that great by themselves, meaning that she can't really get huge spikes of Disparity if her opponent doesn't play an appropriate attack to give her that Disparity. Aside from that, I just want you guys to remember that it doesn't matter who's faster, which means that if you need a specific amount of disparity for an attack to work, consider being slower as being faster isn't always the option and isn't always the most practical thing for you to do. First off, let's start with Maddening. Now, Maddening might not seem like such a good card to a lot of people, and it's really hard to use, but if used well, it becomes one of the best things that Lim can play because it always, almost guarantees that she wins the trade. The power of you and your opponent become equal to the disparity. So as much as you want, keep the disparity within 5 because that's the amount of soap you'll be getting. In light of that, two attacks that I can recommend with this are obviously shots for more stun guard and defense and bursts so that you can have the lowest priority possible. Now, everyone has that card that nobody likes seeing play. And for Lim, that card is Chimeric. Now, Chimeric is not that good in the range department, not that bad in the power department, but freaking amazing when it comes to priority. You see, it has priority plus two, and all of the disparity effects on this card allow Lim to gain more power the more disparity she has. Up to power plus six, which means that her attacks will gain power plus 5. Wow. <laughs> and the before activating itself is not that bad, allowing Lim to close gaps on a lot of people. But what does that mean? This card is therefore an offensive juggernaut, meaning that you'll use this offensively, especially because it has a lot of power and a lot of priority. In light of that, two attacks that I can highly recommend are Drive and Grasp both of which make use of the high priority allowing you to gain more of the disparity power bonuses as well as having a way to either brawl or close gaps depending on whether you play grass or dry. We all know that Lim was a reborn Cherry, or at least Cherry in another form. And Cherry is still personified in Lim through Reverie. Now Reverie has awkward range, not that decent priority, but a power value that will make most other brawlers cry. Now, the catch to this card is that instead of having a lot of disparity, the goal in using Reverie is to have as little disparity as possible. As this attack wins priority dice, and most of the disparity effects are actually bad for you, getting you stunned or losing you life if you have too much disparity. So, the goal with this card is to attempt a lot, and I mean a lot, of clashes. 
Now, when it comes to using specific bases for this card, I highly recommend strikes to cover your back just in case your opponent is faster than you or grasps to make use of that range and have decent priority, which is around 4. And on average, 4 is what most people go for. Now, Surreal is a card that I don't use quite often because it has minimum range and the maximum range is dependent on how much disparity Lim has, making this one of Lim's attacks that can hit full board if, and I mean if, you have enough disparity for it to work. Aside from that, the after activating effect allows Lim to teleport, allowing her to reposition for a better turn next beat. In light of that, I highly recommend using this attack with Grasp so that you can make the most out of the range or drive so that you can at least have some hit confirm even if the disparity isn't that high. I never thought I'd see the day that I'd find another brawler with a dash counter, but here it is. Lim's Fathomless is a dash counter. It gives Lim negative priority, which is pretty okay because this attack gets better and better the bigger the disparity value is. Now, its power might be lackluster, but the effects themselves are just freaking amazing. Making this attack a great, great punish to dashes. <laughs> dashes will not be effective against this attack at all. And watch your opponent dash after you hit them with a seven damage attack to the face. In light of that, Fathomless is almost always used in conjunction with the slowest bases in the game. Which pretty much means you're using this card with bursts so that you're even slower or shots so that you're slow but still have enough hit confirm and stun guard. And finally we have her unique base, Visions. Now Visions is just a unique base entirely based on the disparity that Lim has. Its power is equal to the disparity, up to 5. It can advance you a number of spaces up to the amount of disparity. And on hit, you can move the opponent one or two spaces. Making this card one of the best brawling cards in the game. Now this card only has priority 3, which means that it's the baseline average for a basis priority. Meaning that for you to make the most out of this card, you have to play it with attacks that have extremely high priority or extremely low priority, making Chimeric and Fathomless easy pairs for this card. Lim's two overdrive finishers are Conceit and Megrin. Now, both of these attacks are pretty much the exact same attack with just different priority values, so I'll go over them at the same time. Both of these attacks basically do nothing. They don't hit the opponent at all. Their only effect is that passively, if the disparity is 3 or above, your opponent can hit you, making this card a really effective way of dodging your opponent's stronger attacks. Now, and to beat, your opponent will lose life equal to the amount of disparity, making this attack a great way of dealing damage. Now, Megrim has priority 0, and Conceit has priority 7, which means that if you're against Fast opponents, use Megrim. If you're against slower opponents, use Conceit. It's pretty much as easy as that. One thing to remember when using this is that it is absolutely amazing nearing the end of the game, especially on the last beat. Because if you work it properly, your opponent won't be able to deal any damage and then your opponent will lose so much life which could result in you swiping the victory at the last minute. Now, when it comes to actually using your special action, you might be inclined to use Cancel because Lim is some sort of weird in-between a brawler and a trickster because she has a lot of moves that deal with everything, but they're all dependent on disparity, so it takes some prediction to do it properly. As such, if you're not really sure about what your opponent's doing, Cancel might be very beneficial for you. But if you want to swipe the game in the last turn, might as well use either Conceit or Megrim, depending on how fast your opponent usually is. Okay, now let's move on to advanced strategies and combos. Now, advanced strategies with Lim might seem a bit shallow to most of you, because it's going to boil down to know what your opponent can do. 
which means a mastery of your opponent's cards and a mastery of your opponent's thought process. Now, when I play Lim, usually my thought process is to figure out my opponent's usual spread of priority and then pick which of those attacks my opponent might play this speed. Now, usually these things vary depending on the opponent I'm playing against. The usual thing is to just simply look at the board, pick which of your opponent's options are the most viable, and then work around their priority values. Of course, considering the amount of bonuses, unique abilities, and tokens your opponent could be using within the beat. You see, Lim's styles drastically change the nature of her attacks, which means that you can technically counter things with the base and then counter something with your style depending on the amount of disparity. Now if your opponent has attack A and attack B, let's just say that attack A is countered by a certain base and attack B will be countered by a certain style at a certain amount of disparity. Usually that's how my limb games go. I try to play those attacks that allow me to use the base and the disparity values to the best of their abilities. Another great thing about Lim is faking your opponent out because a lot of her attacks get better and better the more polarized the priorities are. Your opponents will start playing mid-range priority valued attacks, which means that that's their attacks that are usually the tricky types or the brawly types. And that is great for you. You can use that to your advantage. And I know that it doesn't work on everybody, but the amount of meta pressure it has can make the difference in the game. So keep your eyes out for opponents who are falling for the meta traps and bounce when the time is right. Now that's enough for Lim advanced strategy. Let's move on to her combos. Now, Chimeric Drive is a decently fast attack that's meant to be played against slower opponents. And if everything goes well, this attack deals 8 damage with an effective range of 1 to 4. Beware! <laughs> um, this attack is usually played in anticipation of an opponent's burst or shot, and it gets even better the slower they get. So use this against Juggernauts because it's one of your greatest tools. Next up is Maddening Shot. Maddening Shot is all about equalizing the trade. And what better way to do that than with a Maddening Shot? Maddening's Soak and Power Manipulation synergizes well with Shot's innate stun guard, allowing you to brunt a lot of damage while retaliating with your own, knowing that your opponent might not have that soak that you have. This attack is played in anticipation of your opponent's very, very best attacks, which are usually extremely fast or extremely slow. So if you want to conserve and not die within this beat, Maddening Shot is one way to trade, even with the most fearsome of Death Blows or Clockworks. And finally, we have Fathomless Burst. Fathomless Burst is hilarious. Like, I, I can't even tell you guys. Because if somebody dashes you, you'll hit them in the face for 7 damage while gaining superior positioning and stunning them before they even get to move. Yeah, it's, it's pretty hilarious and pretty scary. This attack is played when anticipating your opponent's faster attacks, which is pretty much either your opponent's grasp or your opponent's dash. This attack works wonders against speedsters, such as Demetrius or Schecter. Other than that, this attack is pretty much it. You just dodge the faster attacks with first start to beat effect, and then you punish people for being really fast. It's, it's their fault. And that pretty much does it for some advanced combos. And if you're planning to bring Lim to the battlefield, remember these last few minute tips. Number one, know your opponent's options. Knowing your opponent's options means knowing their priority. And knowing their priority means you're able to better capitalize on your styles that require a lot, and I mean a lot, of disparity. Knowing your opponent's viable options also allows you to counter them better just in case your disparity is not enough. Remember, there's no assurance when using Lim because you don't know until stuff is revealed. So be careful. Number two, it's not always about the disparity. Now, I tell you guys this often, but 
remember that just because a character's unique ability says that she needs this parity doesn't mean that she always has to concentrate on getting this parity. Sometimes this parity is just an added bonus to what you were originally planning to do, even though the cards might not seem that way. Remember, as Lim, sometimes sacrificing safety and coverage is not worth it to get that extra few points of disparity. Remember, the difference between disparity 4 and disparity 3 is not that much, as most of her thresholds are either 3, 5, 6, or 8. So remember, if you're choosing between disparity 3 or disparity 4, there's not much of a difference. And finally, even though you're a brawler type character, don't stay in melee range quite often. Lim gets card locked easily and she has minimum ranges on 2 out of her 5 styles. So be careful with that. Now, that pretty much does it for this episode of Battle Guides. Thank you all so much for watching. Now, if you got interested in BattleCon, want to find out more about BattleCon, or want to find out more about the creators of BattleCon, look in the description down below. But if you want to talk to me or any of the other BattleCon veterans, check the description out below. Now, it's been a long time since I posted a video and thank you all so much for being patient. I promise that I will not be late anymore. Sorry the exams, they're really hard. Thanks for all your support. Now, remember, don't forget your special action and thank you World of Indeeds. Thank you and good night.